Sometimes, when writing an expression for one variable in terms of another, we find that it's easier to instead write an equation relating the two variables, and then rearrange that equation in order to get the desired expression. Let's see an example where this is the case, and then see how we're going to accomplish it. Suppose that a salesman will earn a $70 commission for each sale he makes, and he wants to negotiate a base salary so that his total pay for the year will be $45,000. Write an expression for his base salary, B, in terms of S, the number of sales he expects to make each year. Looking at this, I think that this is an example of a rate of change with a starting value. Right, this, the salesman's total pay is his base salary plus his commission per sale times his number of sales. Plugging in what we know then, his goal 45,000 is his base salary, that's called B, plus his commission per sale times his number of sales. So this is an equation relating B and S. But what we want is something that says B equals stuff with an S in it. The process of taking this equation and rearranging it into that form is called solving for B. Now what do I mean solve for B? In general, what do I mean by solve for some variable? If we have an equation with more than one variable in it, and we want to solve for one of the variables, we pretend we know the values of all the other variables, and then we follow the usual steps to solve the equation. So in our example, we want to solve the equation 4500 equals b plus 70s for b. Just so we remember that it's the only real variable there, I'm going to make the b a different color. So this is what we're pretending we're doing. Pretend we know what the value of s is. And just to pick a number, I'm going to say, pretend s is 500. Then we'd be solving 45,000 equals b plus 70 times 500. 45,000 equals b plus 35,000 subtracting 35,000 from both sides, we would get 10,000 equals b. Okay, so that gives us an idea of what we're really going to do. If we knew what s was, we would plug it in, and then we would get rid of that term. What we're going to really do is just skip all that arithmetic. So we've got 45,000 equals b plus 70s. And now we're going to subtract 70s from both sides. These are not like terms, so we can't combine them. What do we do instead? We just write 45,000 minus 70s. and that equals our b. That's it. That's all there is to it. What's our expression then? His base salary should be 45,000 minus 70s. Not too bad. Let's see another example where solving for one of the variables is a little bit more complicated. And I'm not going to give you a story here, I'm just going to give you the algebra. 
Let's say we want to solve the equation 7x plus 4y equals 100 for y. Well, we're, we're pretending we know what x represents, and we want to get y by itself. Our first move is going to be to subtract 7x from both sides. We'll just be left with 4y is 100 minus 7x. Okay, now the only thing keeping y from being by itself is the 4. So we'll divide both sides by 4. Important to remember, notice that when we have the two terms on the right hand side, we have to divide both of them by 4. This is really just the distributive property in action. Remember, division by 4 is just multiplication by a fourth in a funny hat. So we have y equals 100 minus 7x over 4. If we want to simplify that, we have 1 fourth times 100 plus negative 7x. We distribute. A fourth times 100, that's 100 divided by 4 is 25. Negative 7 times a fourth is just negative 7 fourths. So we get 25 minus 7 fourths x. Our answer, fully simplified, is y equals 25 minus 7 fourths x.